Hi. Welcome to Prime Recap. After finding a notebook that grants him the powers of a Shinigami, Young Light begins to eliminate the biggest criminals on the planet. This brings him into the crosshairs of Interpol and L, the world's greatest detective. Today we will recap the story of the 2017 movie Death Note. In Seattle, Young Light Turner spends his days like any other high school student, but with an intellect far above average, he takes advantage of his ability to make money by answering other students' tests. One day, the young man is studying near the soccer field when a gale suddenly starts and a book with the title, Death Note, falls on his feet. Curious, the young man takes the notebook and begins to analyze it, but as the rain comes soon after, he has to run for shelter. While heading for the entrance, Light finds Kenny Doyle, the school bully, picking on one of his classmates and decides not to do anything about it, but when the girl he likes tries to interfere and also becomes the young man's target, Light finally decides to do something and defends Mia. Feeling confronted, Kenny asks what he's going to do, and Light argues that the bully is of age, so he could end up being arrested for assaulting a minor, but the young man doesn't give a damn and hits Turner with a super punch, causing him to instantly black out. After passing through the infirmary, Light is taken to the principal's office to talk about all the evidence they found in his backpack. Disgusted, the young man tries to talk about the bruise on his face and tell about what Kenny did, however, the principal says that Mia already told him he ran into a steel beam and insists on talking about Light, saying there is no excuse for his bad behavior and putting him in detention. After class, the teacher wakes Light up saying that she will need to leave the room and asking him to be alone for a few minutes, finally giving the young man a chance to look at Death Note more calmly. With time to spare, Turner begins to leaf through the notebook and finds several rules in the first few pages, but a jar with hundreds of marbles in it falls to the ground and he decides to go there to investigate. Frightened, Light asks if there is anyone in the room and walks towards the storeroom looking for the one who knocked over the pot, finding a creepy, ghostly figure in the middle of the darkness. Startled, the young man tries desperately to escape, but the door locks right in his face and tables start flying around him. Afraid, Light runs under the teacher's desk, which is soon also dragged across the room, leaving him totally unprotected. Suddenly, the objects stop flying and the creature responsible for this introduces itself as Ryuk, a Shinigami. Finding it strange, Light tries to ask some questions and is completely ignored by the specter, who only asks him to listen to the sounds around him. Quietly, Turner hears shouting coming from outside and realizes that Kenny is pestering another student, getting quite the urge to test whether the notebook really works. With Ryuk's encouragement, Light takes a pen and writes the bully's name on the death note, sentencing the man to be deheaded. With his name and cause written in the death note, Turner is watching Kenny when an accident almost happens on the street, forcing the driver of a pickup truck to drive onto the sidewalk and collide with a parked car, dropping the ladder on its roof that hits the bully in the head, causing his brains to explode. Realizing that the young man has courage, Ryuk tells him that he has a bright future and that he can make great changes in the world with the Death Note, but that if he doesn't feel capable, Light can abandon the notebook and the Shinigami will take care of finding a new owner. At the end of the conversation, Ryuk mysteriously disappears and leaves Light alone in the middle of the mess to figure out what to do. Later at the Turner home, the young man talks to his father, James, about why he ended up in detention, but the dialogue quickly turns into an argument when they start talking about the man who ran over the young man's mother and got away with it. Furious, Light goes to his room to read the rules again when he notices Ryuk sitting on his bed. Unsure about Rule 20, the young man decides to ask how it works after the name is written in the notebook and the specter replies that the person who has his name written in the death note is under the control of a Shinigami for up to 48 hours, meaning that he will do whatever the death note holder writes, as long as it is physically possible. With this information in hand, Light takes some newspaper clippings about the man who ran over his mother and decides to turn him into his second victim, causing a waiter to trip over the criminal and the knife to be stuck in the man. The next morning, James wakes up with the news and decides to tell the news to his son, who finally realizes that it is all real. Determined to use the notebook in the best possible way, Light begins to study the rules more and more, and even reads them during class, but this eventually catches the attention of Mia, who approaches him to find out more about what happened to Kenny. Realizing that the girl liked the fact that the bully was no longer among them, Light makes a questionable decision, to say the least, and decides to tell her about the notebook's powers, but obviously she does not believe him. To prove that he is telling the truth, Light takes the death note and allows Mia to touch it, believing that she will be able to see the Shinigami, but this is not what happens. According to Ryuk, only the guardian of the notebook can see him. Wanting to show he is serious, the young man looks for a crime that is happening live and writes the name of the individual on one of the pages, as well as putting a very detailed description saying that the criminal will come out of the store, do a military salute and be run over by SWAT right afterwards, 
and that is exactly what happens. Finally convinced that everything is real, Mia says that with the notebook they will be able to change the world, and together they start a real cleanup of the world, eliminating all the criminals that appear in the newspapers. Determined to put an end to the evil in the world, the couple starts to idealize a god for the new world and decide to call him Kira, a Japanese name to try to mislead the authorities and make them look for the responsible person in the wrong continent, but they end up gaining worldwide fame and Interpol decides to contact L, also known as Ryuzaki, the greatest detective in the world. Impressed, James tells Light about the reinforcements in the investigation and finds it strange that his son seems shaken, but decides to ignore it, thinking that it's just because the young man is a fan of Kira, like all his fellow policemen. At the police station, James takes up his own son's case and is immediately visited by Watari, who says that Kira is directly connected to the police and that they therefore need to put together a reliable team, inviting him to a conversation with the world's greatest detective immediately. During the conference, L says that the FBI is looking for Kira in Japan because of the name, but the detective shows he already knows that the name is a distraction and says that based on his first victims, he is walking the streets of Seattle. Interested in what the young man knows, Detective Turner agrees to join the team and they both begin to analyze the evidence they have so far, coming to the conclusion that Kira has privileged information from the police database, but that the network was never hacked. In other words, the criminal is probably a cop. After telling James everything he knows, L decides to go public and speaks directly to Kira, challenging him to take his life on a national network just to prove his point that the person responsible for the acts can only affect someone by seeing his face. From home, Light watches L's provocations without being able to do anything to stop him, waiting for his father to arrive to ask about the identity of the investigator. Since James also does not know Ryuzaki's name or face, Light decides that he will have to investigate on his own, but discovers that he is being followed by some agents and decides to tell his father, who is furious that someone is following his son. Cold as ever, Ryuzaki says that he has investigated James and found that there is not the slightest chance that he is Kira, but that the outcome was quite different when he started watching his son, causing the young man to become one of the main suspects. Realizing that the officers are still after him, Light suggests that they take a break with the Death Note until the police get off their tail, but both Mia and Ryuk disagree with the idea and suggest that he try to find out the officer's name to eliminate him. Light refuses saying that this would only confirm that he is Kira and Mia gives the idea to eliminate all the policemen who are following the suspects, so that nobody would know which of the investigated ones is responsible for the events and they would still manage to frighten the whole corporation. Refusing to eliminate innocence, Light once again refuses the girl's idea and decides he will just wait, but the next day, all the agents gather at the top of a building and throw themselves off it for no apparent reason, making the young man extremely angry. At home, Light asks if Ryuk was the one who eliminated the FBI agents and says that he is the one who decides which names will be written in the notebook, and threatens to write the Shinigami's own name in the Death Note. But the creature just laughs and says that he can even try, but that the most they have been able to write until now are two letters. After the argument, Light goes to his room and starts doing his chores when Mia notices that James is on TV talking openly about what Kira did with the 12 agents, accusing him of being a villain and trying to turn the population against him, which makes the girl suggest that her boyfriend write his own father's name on the Death Note. Obviously, Light refuses to do this and says that the myth of Kira is over, kicking the girl out of his house, but this lack of courage in taking James's life has made it extremely clear to L the true identity of the culprit for the crimes. The next night, Light is in a coffee shop when L shows up and asks if it was difficult to decide to spare his own father's life, making it clear to the young man that he already knows everything. Pretending to have no idea what he is talking about, Light says he is innocent and gets up to leave, but ends up seeing Ryuk at the entrance of the establishment and decides to ask the investigator how he thinks Kira commits his crimes, discovering that his rival has no idea about the Death Note, as well as making him reveal his true face for the first time. With only Ryuzaki's real name left to be discovered, Light returns home and decides to use Watari to get this information. The young man's plan is to write the name of L's tutor in his notebook to put him under the Shinigami's control, thus influencing the old man to say Ryuzaki's real name before the 48 hours pass. At the end of this time, Light intends to destroy the notebook sheet and thus cancel the effects of the Death Note without Watari being eliminated, but Ryuk warns him that this can only be done once per tutor. As soon as they finish talking, L's guardian comes under the Shinigami's influence and immediately calls Light to let him know that he doesn't know the investigator's real name, because according to him, he only started being his guardian after he left the San Marta orphanage, that is, when he was already called L. Frustrated. Light asks how he can find out the name, and Watari replies that this information only exists in the orphanage's records. 
Therefore, there is no other solution but to send him to San Marta to retrieve the files. Almost as if under the effects of the imperious curse, Watari gets on a train and leaves straight for the orphanage without communicating with anyone, leaving L extremely worried about his friend's disappearance. Knowing who is responsible for this, Ryuzaki goes straight to Light's house to ask for Watari's whereabouts, and makes it clear to James that his son is Kira, which deeply offends Detective Turner and causes them both to start a fight. Furious, L says that Light has crossed the line and will not survive after this, but James does not allow his son to be threatened in front of him and kicks Ryuzaki out of his house. With a warrant in hand, the police arrive at the place soon after and start installing security cameras everywhere, as well as scanning the place for anything suspicious, failing to find the death note that is with Light. The next day, the young man goes to school and takes the opportunity on the way to call Watari unattended, discovering that he is still searching for the location of the orphanage, which was never intended to be easily accessible. With the police on his tail, Light goes to school where Mia gives him a costume for the prom as part of the plan. As it gets dark, Watari finally arrives at the San Marta orphanage and begins searching for the records room. But somehow the police manage to track him down and are also in the place. After some time searching, Watari finally finds the room with the documents and begins his hunt for L's papers. At the graduation party, Light seems to be enjoying himself and takes several pictures while the policemen watch from afar. Until, in the middle of the event, they take advantage of the movement so Mia invites another young man in an identical outfit to her boyfriend and passes him Light's top hat. In this way, the cops can only see the hat on the dance floor and don't even suspect that the real target goes to the death note in his closet. In a hurry, Light picks up his cell phone and calls Watari to see if he has found the documents yet, but since there are only a few minutes left before the time set in the notebook, the young man tries to make the man give up looking while he tries to find the page on which he wrote Watari's name to destroy. Desperate, Light orders L's guardian to stop searching and leave the building immediately, but the man ignores him completely, as he is still being manipulated by what was written in the notebook. After searching through the death note, Light realizes that the sheet with Watari's name on it has been torn off and immediately assumes that it was Mia so as not to leave any witnesses, becoming completely furious with the girl. At this point, L's guardian finally finds Ryuzaki's real papers and prepares to reveal the name to Kira, but just as he is about to speak, two policemen arrive on the scene and shoot Watari, ending his life right on schedule as Light said it. At the same time, Ryuk appears behind the Death Note bearer and starts giggling as the young man asks why he didn't warn about the torn page, but the Shinigami replies only that he likes Mia and didn't want to interfere. Back at the dance hall, Light goes to his girlfriend and accuses her of taking Watari's life, but the girl sees it differently and responds by saying that she saved both of their skins, just as she did when she eliminated the agents. In other words, it was not Ryuk who took the lives of the 12 policemen, but Mia. While Light was distracted, the girl took a sheet of paper from her notebook and began to track Agent Raymond, incapacitating him and forcing him to write down the names of everyone involved in the operation at once, saving Light from being caught. Seeing her own boyfriend as a weakling, Mia tells him that he can stop Kira's dream if he wants, but that to do so, he will need to pass the notebook to her name. Disgusted, Light says he will never allow her to touch the notebook and the girl reveals that she has written his name on a page. Setting his end exactly for midnight, but he can still save himself because she will destroy the page if he hands over the death note. Since she still loves Light, Mia says that when she owns the death note she will burn his name out of the notebook, and that's why she tore the page out of Watari, because if they had saved the man, Light surely wouldn't be so lucky. From his base of operations, L gets a call from the cops advising him what has happened to Watari and goes into a state of insane rage, taking a vehicle and setting off in a rush towards the school. Already wondering what he is up to, James also contacts the cops and orders them to arrest L at any cost, before the investigator hurts his son. Being practically robbed by his own girlfriend, Light runs to the closet where he discovers that Mia really did write his name in the notebook. After the confirmation, the young man runs to the nearest computer and starts making some notes when the police arrive on the scene in full force. Believing that he is being hunted by the authorities, Light arranges with Mia to meet at the Ferris wheel on the pier and begins to run towards the beach, but L is determined to stop him and goes after him. After a long chase through the alleys, Turner goes inside a restaurant and tries to get out the back, but Ryuzaki manages to get around the top and corner the teenager just as he comes through the door. Completely surrendered, Light says that he can't prevent the end Watari has met and that he can take the lives through a calculation book, but before he can even explain further, a restaurant employee comes out the back of the store and hits L in the head with a supreme woodcut, revealing himself to be a Kira supporter. Without L behind him, Light finds Mia on the Ferris wheel and threatens the employee to put them both on top, then shoots the hydraulic system. 
making it impossible for anyone to bring them down. At the top, Light asks Mia to run away together and never use the Death Note again, so that they can live their lives in peace, but the girl is not at all interested and only asks him to give it to her soon. Just then, James arrives at the waterfront and starts shouting his son's name, distracting the young man and allowing Mia to take the Death Note from his hands. As soon as she does, the metal of the Ferris wheel begins to twist and the entire structure begins to collapse, leaving everyone below in despair. With the cabin fully tilted, Mia slips out of the structure and is held by Light, who must use his strength to keep them both safe, but the young man can't hold on for long and ends up falling with his girlfriend, hitting the water while the girl crashes into a flower store on the waterfront. Along with the young man, the Death Note falls into the water and is soon found by another man at the edge of the beach, but the page that decreed Light's end came loose from the notebook during the fall and ended up falling on a fire spike, nullifying what Mia wrote. Two days later, Kira is still acting even though Light is in a coma and this completely ruins the career of L, who has been chasing an innocent man all this time, forcing the police commander to expel him from the case and deport him back to Japan. On the plane, L remembers Light's words about the calculus book and decides to call the police to ask if any notebooks on this subject have been seized. Upon learning that he did, Ryuzaki remembers the young man's curriculum and realizes that neither he nor Mia had calculus classes, so he was telling the truth on his way out of the restaurant. With this information in hand, L orders the pilot to cancel takeoff and goes to the young man's room to look for the book, finding the page that Mia used to eliminate the FBI agents right in the middle of the notes. With the proof of the crime in hand and overcome with hatred, L takes a pen and writes Light's name on the death note, never imagining that a mysterious visitor arrives at the hospital and leaves the rest of the death note in the unconscious young man's lap. As soon as Light regains consciousness, James enters his bedside and reveals that he went into his son's room and found the piece of newspaper about the man who ran over his wife, but since this paper was locked in his safe until the day before the man was eliminated, this made Detective Turner realize that L was right and that Light was Kira all along. Curious, James asks how his son was able to do all this, and the young man finally reveals his plans. When he went to get the death note during the dance, Light wrote down the name of a doctor with a very bad record, causing him to be influenced to be on the pier at the time of the fall and remove his body from the water, using his influence at the hospital to keep him in an induced coma for two days, throwing himself off the top of the building at the end of 48 hours. At the same time, Light also wrote the name of a criminal letter carrier to retrieve the death note from the water and use it for the next two days so that the authorities would believe that Kira was still at large. With the 48 hours over, the Shinigami-influenced letter carrier delivers the death note to its true owner and takes his own life moments later. As for Mia, Light wrote that should she take the death note from his hands, the Ferris wheel would begin to give way and the girl would crash into the waterfront, while he falls safely into the water. Just as the young man finishes explaining his entire plan, L finishes writing Light's name and Ryuk appears at the hospital door saying how much fun humans are, taking his former partner's life shortly thereafter. What did you think of Light's plan? Would you dare to use the death note? So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.